Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Flame Room 4. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn this reduced crate here, which I found in my local uh, Dunhill Mill. It was $9.99, now $4.99. I'm going to show you how you can turn this into a NAF stage, like this one here. Let's bring it down so you can see it. So if you look in, this is a sold out gift from for Christmas. So I decided to just make one. It didn't seem that difficult to do. And it also has a light up stage. You can see Bonnie here. You've also got Chica. We've got working doors. So the doors here are literally open. So like so. And then this one opens as well. We've got balloons here. And then we've also got a little Space Invader arcade game if they decide that they want to wake up in the night and start playing with the arcades. I'm going to show you how to build one of these for yourself straight after this intro. Hey guys, and welcome back. So I'm just going to run through the whole list of everything that you're going to need for this project. So if you haven't got it, what you can do is literally just slow this this video down and see what I've got and then go out and get it and then carry on to watch the video how to make it. So I decided to get one of these crates. They're very light. Like I say, this was from Donnell Mill. It was reduced because this was supposed to be on the front and it had broken off, but it's perfect for what I want. You might not be able to find something like this yourself, but if you don't, then you can always just build the box just from thin wood. I think this is possibly about 10 mil thick, which is ideal for what I want. And the wood, wood is really lightweight, so that's the first thing you're going to need. If you go onto eBay, you will find, I'm not sure if my camera will focus, little door handles like this. That's a little door handle. You can go on there and get those. That is from the tall house gallery, the toy house dollhouse gallery just there you can get them on ebay i will leave a list of everything and links to all the stuff that i got in the description so if you if you can't find stuff then you can go over and find it on my channel so those are the things you need i know there's another door handle in there but i'm just going to quickly try and find it and then lost them in an earlier so two door handles let's just put this over here all right so that's that piece you will need masking tape, preferably two inch and one inch, and then you will need a needle and some thread, black thread preferably. Let's put those to the side. You're gonna need red paint, try and get as bright as you can, and you will need black paint. These are just little sample pots, they're like a quid, they're not a lot of money. You will need a saw, you could get like a proper saw, this is just a little hack saw, but it's perfect for cutting through thin wood, and that is gonna be what you need to cut some of the little bits of wood off. You also need some double sided sticky tape like this. Oops, something fell. So you need double sided sticky tape where it's sticky both sides and it's got a little bit of thickness to it. You can use other stuff, you can do it however you want. Like I say, this is a custom build, one of a kind. I will be giving away the second one I build in a giveaway, so keep an eye out for that. If it's something that you want and you, you think is a good idea to do a giveaway, let me know, okay? So you will need duct tape which some people call like, I'm not too sure, like fabric tape, but I call it duct tape. You will need that. I'm running out of space already. You will need, I was gonna get, P, uh, not PVA glue, I was gonna get some wallpaper paste, but I found this board and overlap adhesive, and that works perfect on putting the walls on. So I'll just quickly go to the walls now as I'm talking about them. So on eBay again, you can buy wallpaper like dollhouse wallpaper which is shaped like bricks so you see here the dollhouse wallpaper is shaped like real looking bricks okay so you can get big sheets this did not cost a lot of money oh i think this was like a couple of quid for like two large sheets like that and you just literally wallpaper paste it on like you would if you just put wallpaper paste on but we'll go through that i'll show you how to do that for yourself in this video so stay tuned guys I wish I had more space. Right, so that's the paste. Remember to get that. That's like 99p. 
then you will need a few accessories here. So you'll need some pliers, you'll need a couple of little screwdrivers, a dumpy uh, Phillips screwdriver. You will need a paintbrush, a little thin paintbrush. We'll leave that out because we're going to be doing something in a second with that. You will need some scissors. You will need some mini bunting. Look at the little bunting. They do have the stages, usually a happy birthday one, but obviously I don't want it to be happy birthday because I want it to be an all year round one, so that's why I just got plain bunting. And then we can just change the theme of how we want. There are some birthday balloons in there, but we, they can come out, so there we take out. There's some more tape, you don't need loads of tape, but I just had loads handy. You will need some impact glue, so basically impact glue like that, which hold wood together or metal or anything like that. That is what you will need. Let's, while we're on glue, stick to this. So this is super glue. You could get decent stuff, but this stuff is very good. It's just from the pound shop, you get like three of them. It's fine for what that is. You will need a couple of blades, Stanley blades. You can go get yourself a proper cutting tool, but I like to just work with this because it works fine for what I need. Um, always have a parent around if you're, gonna, if you're a kid and you're going to attempt to try and do one of these yourself. You can do the friendly one, but obviously I think that you're going to need some adult supervision if you want it to look as real as the one that I made. Uh, I've got some wrap-off lines. So this is just literally checkered wrap, which is perfect for the floor. I've got loads of this left, so if you want to make one for yourself and you don't have enough, I'm not going to make another one, so... I'm only going to make two and there's only going to be two out in the whole entire world. So if you want some of this, let me know and I'll send you some. Let me know the size you want. I'll cut it off and I'll, e and I'll mail it to you. Not email it because that's impossible. I'll mail it to you free of charge. So I have that. Obviously you can't have the crate because I only have two. Then you can get these little doors which are like this. They're so cute. Look. So hinge doors. Like dollhouse doors. These are like 1 18th scale. And they are perfect for doing this project because you just literally cut out the frame, you push them in, you glue them, and then you put these other things on the side, and then it looks absolutely brilliant. So we're going to leave that out because we're going to be painting those very, very soon in preparation to it. So I'll just show you how they come. So they're like three quid off eBay each, which is not a lot of money. This whole build cost me around about £30, and to buy the set one, which looks rubbish because it's made of Lego, is, I think it was around about £45, and you can't get hold of it. So I've made one that looks better, so you'd probably be better to just spend some time and make one. It does take a little while to do, but once it's made, it's made, and, you know, my son's going to get this on Christmas Day, and we're going to see his reaction, because we're going to be filming it on Christmas Day, so we'll see what he thinks of it. And he's got the rest of the characters to go with it. These little balloons, also you can get them off eBay, they're like about three or four quid, they're not a lot. You get two bunches like that, then you can cut them off, and have a look at them, they're so cute, little balloons, they look real, they're just like literally plastic, but they look like balloons. So when we're celebrating... We're doing that. So this was the mini bunting. Did I actually say where this came from? Probably not. From Tiger. Do you have a Tiger nearby? Uh, there's a shop that we have which are around, uh, we don't have one in Bury, but in Ipswich, which is uh, quite close to where my girlfriend lives, there's a Tiger. And these are 99p for these buntings and there's loads. Obviously there was all that that got out and then there was this and that's just 99p. So I'd say that's quite worth it. There is flooring, so you get wood flooring like this, obviously I've cut some out because I've done the stage flooring, it's perfect for the stage flooring, again I will leave a description, I think this was like 79p for a sheet, so it wasn't a lot of money at all for the flooring, run out of space guys. Right, this fabric I found with my girlfriend one weekend, we were looking around and this is perfect for the curtains in the FNAF stage. I don't know if you've seen Five Nights at Freddy's, but this is literally the curtains. So this was, got the price tag on it still, two ninety nine for this off cut. And I've got loads. And I only need a little bit more to do the rest of the curtains. So again, if you want to make a FNAF stage and you don't have any fabric, let me know and I'll mail you the sizes that you want or just the rest of it if you want the rest of it. Free of charge to your address, and you can have that to make yourself a FNAF stage, okay? That's my little offer to you, other than the free giveaway that I'm going to be doing. You'll need some tweezers, because they put the handle on, so you don't get super glue on your fingers. I did super glue my finger to the table or the desk today, so try not to do that, because that's not very good. Right, the other things you're going to need are three sizes of 
drill. So you need like a quite a big size. I don't know what sizes they are. Oh, that's an eight. So, and this is a five. And this one is a five as well, it says. Oh, this is a 3.5 and a five. So a 3.5, five and an eight. Whatever that means. I don't know. I'm not technical. I just build stuff. I don't know tools. I'm not a tool person. Right, so to make the posters that are on the wall, I took a picture offline, just printed that out on plain paper. I had two of these self-laminating card things, and I cut them out and stuck those. We will do that very, very shortly, so I'll show you how to do that. Then I got this. I don't have another one yet, but I will get it, and it will come with it. So this is just like a money box, and I got some felt, and I stuck the felt on the top and then folded it over. And then just got rid of the money box sock side of it, just so that it looks cool. So look, it's a little Space Invaders thing. And it's really good, because in the FNAF uh, stage, which you can buy, it has one of these. So that was a really good thing for me to, you know, just set it off so that we had that there. Right, so that's that. So felt. You can get this, like, sticky felt from anywhere. I have loads of it at work. So if you want some, let me know. I'll send you some. Get some over to you. Right, you'll need 80 grit sandpaper. To sand down the wood because it's perfect for sanding the wood down. Let's leave that over there. You will need some clear LED lights to make the stage light up. Um, these were from Poundland, so obviously I didn't need to tell you the price of those because it's from Poundland. Uh, they're really good. They're like battery powered, and then you can stick the battery pack on the back. I will show you how I did it on mine, and just literally just put them through so that the lights shine around the bottom, and then it looks lights up the stage, and it makes it look really cool. So there's that. Right. So you will need a length of wood. I don't know sizes because I'm really rubbish at sizes, but this pine strip is 2,400 millimeters. I'm not sure of the thickness, but it's just square wood like this. And it's used to support the bottom of the stage, but we'll show you that in a moment. And it's also used to support underneath the stage for the flooring. So we'll leave it this side. You will need some cotton with obviously that, which we've already spoke about. So that's an extra bit there. You will need a standing knife. Remember if you're using sharp tools like this, you will need adult supervision. Sorry, I was just looking around for some stuff. Right, you will need a sponge to apply on the top when you're putting the wallpaper on, which is the brick effect. You'll need it to push it down so it sticks well. So there's that. We're getting to an end. You will also need a paintbrush. This one has still got the PVA glue on it. You know if you put a paintbrush in a bag and you take all the air out and you seal it, the glue will stay wet for ages. So that's a good tip if you don't want to go wash it up and you're too lazy like I am. You could just whack it in a bag and then use it again. So there you go. So you need a big paintbrush for wallpaper pasting. You will need, I've wrapped them in this foil here. See if I can get one out but you will need little screws. You won't need many of them, probably about 10. They're tiny little screws like that. Like I said, I will put all the descriptions of sizes and what I've used in the comments. So if you're like, what the hell size is that? But you'll probably make yours at a different scale, a bigger scale, a smaller scale, I don't know. Whether you're just here to win one or see how it's made because you're just interested in how to make one, then, then fine, that's cool. Little hooks like this you'll need. They're the hook one. And then you'll need the actual oval ones like that to make the curtain rails for the stage curtains. So there's that. You will also need a piece of paper. This piece of paper, it literally, I just measured it uh, on here for the depth. I made it a little bit longer because you have to overlap it for the curtain. So if you can imagine the stage will be like that, then imagine if you lap it over to go around the circular pieces of wood. So this circle piece of wood here. This was 70, 72p, and I got like two meters of it. It's all been cut off, obviously. And then you wrap it around there, and then it's like the perfect length for, you know, the curtains, for the stage curtains. So if you want to know what size this is, let me know. I'll keep it, and then I'll put the description of what size that is. But if, if you get one of these, you might not get one of these. So there's that. Right, so we've done the words. We've discussed that. We've moved this out of the way for one moment. Did I say paintbrush already, or do I go through paintbrush? I've got another one. Here you go, paintbrush. You'll need a pen to do little markings. And that's it. I've already cut some pre bits because I've already made one. So, I'm going to leave it at that. That's everything you need to make the FNAF stage. 
go ahead and go get all those. You can pause the video here if you want to, and then come back, and then we're going to crack on with doing the little posters and get everything ready to do the stage, okay? See you in a bit. So guys, to make the little posters that you can see here for the wall, all I said is you just literally have to cut out a picture from online. You can use any ones you want, but I went for these. So let's go ahead and quickly cut those out. So. Right guys, so now that these are cut out, you need to get these little foil, I don't know what they're called, they're called self-laminating cards. And then you need to peel off the sticky bit. And then you just put the picture into the sticky thing and then just push it right to the top. And then just fold it over and then slowly work your way down in the middle. And then just tap it all down so that all the rubbish comes out. And then once it's stuck, it should look like that. Because the outside is too big, you would just need to literally trim it down so it looks poster size, like so, and then the top. And then there you have your little FNAF poster, which looks really cool. Let's just go ahead and quickly make the second one. And then you have two perfect posters. So that's how you make the posters for the FNAF. We're going to show you how to stick those on later. I think it's a probably a bit obvious, but anyway, we'll go on to the next stage. So guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to get these doors painted up. So as you can see, they're just literally plain wood and there's no preparation done to them. Oh, we want to make them look really, really old and rustic. And we also have these pieces as well. So we're going to get now both the doors ready so that we can paint one red with the red paint and then we're going to paint one black with the black paint. I'm going to go ahead and paint the red one first and I will show you and tell you why in a moment. So let's go and paint this one red first. You do not need to be neat with this. Make sure you give it a good shake. Get your paintbrush Peel back the lid. If you get it on you don't worry, that's why I've got this box here, because I get rid of all the rubbish. And then you want to just start in the middle and just start painting away. I'll probably do a bit of fast forwarding for painting this, because otherwise we'll be here forever, although it doesn't take me long to paint it anyway. But I'll see you guys once I finish doing it and then we'll get on to the next stage. To go back onto the red one even though it's still a little bit wet it doesn't matter so what we're going to do now is make it look old so the way to do that is literally with the brush where it's got a little bit of black paint left on it you just put a bit on there and then brush it off onto a surface and then all you want to do is literally just sort of score in between these edges whatever comes off comes off and then just go down like this only very lightly on the gaps a little bit in that corner, and a bit down there, a bit on that corner there, a little bit down, a little brush straight down, down, a bit at the bottom, a bit in the corner, a little bit in that door frame. Basically, you just want it to like literally just score the edges with a bit of black paint because 
I mean, it's it's a FNAF stage, you know, it's it's gonna look old, it's gotta look old and withered, and it's not gonna be perfect, so then you just do the same on the other side, so just brush down, as you can see, like, the technique I'm using, it's just me just putting a bit of paint on the corners in the edges where it would probably wear like that and then leave that to dry so if you can see that that's all now looking I mean there's still brush strokes in there and stuff but that's perfect because you don't want it to be perfect because you want it to look old so that's what it looks like right so let's come back up there just put that out of the way and then the same with these so just lay these down these are the edging and with the rest of it just go down them a little bit just with whatever's left on the brush and there you have it so that looks old and now we're going to move on to the next stage while those dry now that we have done the doors and what do we do we've done the posters we're going to go on to the box because the box has got some bits in it that we need so this thing is perfect for the stage this came out of the front of here and it's just the right size and everything i will put the size of this in the description below if you need me this can go away because this is just a chalk that came with it so that can go in the bin we don't need any chalk if you need any chalk let me know i'll take about the bin i'll send it to you right so I'm going to get all the broken bits off, which is why it was reduced, and then I'm going to dismantle this box. Right guys, so now that the the casing is all apart, what we need to do now is, this is the back piece, I think, no, this is the back piece, so this is the back piece, you need to keep that separately. This is the other, the other part of it, so that was the other, other side of the back piece, so like the front piece, and we need to cut it down so it's the same size as the side. So what we need to do is literally line this up straight, and then we're going to mark it, and then we're going to get it cut. Right, so we just need to go cut that. But before we cut it, what we're going to do is we're going to mark out where the doors go. So one of these doors should be dry by now, which they are. Lovely and dry. What we need to do is move this out of the way. Lay this flat down, and then just put the door on top. And you want to, you need to do it around the way where that flooring is going to sit in there. Because obviously the flooring is going to sit on that, exactly. So we need to line it up so that it's just above the flooring. Like so. Make sure it looks straight. Nice gap on top. That looks lovely. And then we just need to draw around the inner part of door frame. Just score that up nicely. Here we go. And from doing the last one, I've realised that you want to make the door frame like a fraction bigger. So when I'm cutting, I'm going to be cutting it inside the line that I'm making currently. You might be better off with a pencil or something, as opposed to trying to do it with a pen. Once we've got our markings, we can just go and cut that out. I mean, you don't really need to see me cutting it out because all it is is I'm just going to cut this section. Once I've done it, I'll come back to you and show you what it what it looks like. So, if you can see, there's the marking to do the door. We've done it with the handle because that will cover that whole thing like it did on the last one. And we'll just get that cut out, and we're going to mark the second one as well. So let's just put that to the side because we know we've got to cut that out. We'll go ahead and cut that out in a minute. Using the same door because they're both the same size, 
you want to work out that this is the bottom and this is the piece you're going to keep, this is the bit you're going to get rid of. And then with the door, you want, I did it so that the door was more to the right, so we'll do the same again. We'll line the door up. Maybe go in a little bit further than before. We can make it different, a bit more custom, you know. And then we'll mark out the door frame again. So, get up a bit higher. We want to mark out the door. So we mark down there. Then we want to mark that side. This wood score is really easy anyway. And then mark down there. And then we'll take the door away. The door could go back to dry off a little bit more. Over here, out of the way, with the black door. If it wants to, there you go. And then we've just got to see where we are. So, and then we'll go cut them out. Once I cut them out, I'll just show you. A good tip for cutting out wood, obviously, because it's in the middle, is to drill holes in the corners first. So, I don't know if you can see here, they're the door markings. You want to drill four holes in each point, and then you want to get like a saw or whatever you've got in there into there to cut out the, the, the holes that you've got, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and I'll be back in a moment, and then we'll move on to the next step. Hey guys, and welcome back to doing the stage flooring. So as you can remember from before, this little bit of stage flooring here came with the side of the crate. So that was like in the side and that's like got a chalkboard on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be covering this in a wood effect. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've already cut this as well. This is like a vinyl, but it's quite thick. So you need to heat it up quite a lot. So you will need a heat gun. We might have missed that one out in the first steps, but go grab yourself a heat gun now. What we need to do is again line this up on here. I'm just going to go straight down that line and then I'll just show you where where we are with this because it's already pretty much halfway there. It doesn't have to be too straight because you're not going to see it so we can just demo it. Right so this is going to cover that. This is what you want it to look like. It wants to have an overlap of that much on each side because the rest of it we're going to tape up with uh, the parcel tape, not the parcel tape, the duct tape, and then that will hold it in place. So to do that, to achieve a good result, you want to make sure the place is dust free. This isn't brilliantly dust free, but it will do. So you want to heat up the vinyl. So let's go ahead and do that. Don't get it too hot. Do it so that it goes onto your hand, and then you'll know if you're getting it too warm, because if your hand is starting to burn, you know it's too much. Probably not one of the best advice things I've ever come up with. But there's just a way to tell if you're doing too much. So doing this kind of makes the it makes the adhesive come back out. You know, it kind of makes it all sticky. It wants to fold up on itself. Once that's nice and warm to touch, you just need to pick one of the edges, like so. If I can actually peel it, I don't know why peeling it's become such an issue right now. Let's do this. Let's do it. Here we go. Right, peeled. Right. So you peel that back, make sure it doesn't fold in on itself, because that has happened before. Have a bin local, chuck all your rubbish out. So then that lays down, sticky side up. Then you need to bring it forward. But you want to make, actually, let's just take a chill pill and let's just stick it down there. We need to do it so that the wood is lined up perfectly. Once you've got your vinyl down, you just want to give it a heat again, just so that it sticks really, really well. Oh, that should be hot enough. Mind of his own. Did you hear that? Right, so we want sponge. With the sponge, you just need to go to the edges, push out all the vinyl because a sponge doesn't really scratch stuff. And it's good to push down, it's really easy to go down and do it like that. This stuff is really sticky, which I guess is good, but sometimes it just sticks too much to itself. Right, so. Once you've done that, you need to turn it so it's went this way around. I've got a little tiny bit there, but it's fine. You're not going to see it. Heat the edges again. We 
need to make a couple of incisions. So what you want to do is you want to cut the corners so that they're right close to the edge, but you're leaving a little gap as well. I'm not too sure if you know what I mean, but I'll show you once I've done it. So there. It's not a five minute job guys, it takes a little while. Okay, so that's done. As you can see I've got a tear there, I'm going to put a black blank on there. You won't see it, it'll be hidden behind the curtain anyway. But we got a tiny bit of a tear which wasn't brilliant. You just want to kind of work your fingers down and bend this material around the corner. Start with the front, get the front perfect, because if the front's perfect, the rest of it will be good. So let's fold that over. There we go. Nice. Right. So once the front's all folded over, then you want to fold the back over. Spin that over like that. Like so. Right, so like that. Then you will be left with a wood flooring like so. So that's the stage flooring, guys. That's finished. We're going to go on to laminating the actual flooring itself. So we're going to, I'm just going to keep running with the video. I'm going to actually patch this up because I split it a bit, but it'll be fine because I can stick this fabric piece over and you won't notice because it will be at the back and it'll just be like kind of where. A stage door would be so your one's going to be a tiny bit more custom I've got loads of this felt tape like I said so you don't need to worry too much I'm gonna stick a little custom bit of felt gum there so this one will be a little bit different to the one that I made and then you just got this little this little platform on the back which will be covered by the curtain anyway there you go right so we need to now laminate the floor. The floor is tiled in the FNAF picture and on the actual FNAF stage. So we need to go ahead and do that. So what we need to do is get rid of all of this excess stuff. Put that down. And we need the flooring which is here. Here's the floor. So all we need to do is measure it from the top. It doesn't matter what way around it goes. Try and be a bit sparingly with it. And then you've got like little guides, so you can follow the guides down. So I'm going to just know that it's here, so I'm just going to follow that down there. There we go. Right. And with this again, I have to make sure that the front is even because I did stick one of these down before and it wasn't even and it looked rubbish. So let's make sure we do that. What we need to do is heat this up. So lay that down as flat as we can and then give it some heat, pump some heat into it. Don't get them too hot so it melts, just get it hot enough so that it sticks. And to stop this ever coming up or coming off of the platform, what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this duct tape, which is, some people call it felt tape, some people call it duct tape, it's all called different things. And then pull a strip, figure out where you want it, cut it, it cuts really easily because it rips like, um, I don't know, I don't know how well fabric rips. And then just go right to the edge with it as far as you can down to there and then you want to get your Stanley blade and then just cut a nice thin line not going through both of the materials this once you've scored this stuff it does tend to rip really easily like that so you get a nicer edge and you want to go around the whole thing because that will that will stop it from ever peeling up so it will never come up again there you go that's the floor done. So we can put that out of the way in the done pile. I don't know where the done pile is, I haven't figured it out yet. 
Now you can do the same with this stage flooring that we made earlier. We need to put some tape on there to stop that peeling up. There you go. So that is now the bottom. That's the top of the stage with the little platform. I like the little felt platform, it feels nice. It's just, it's just good, it's different, it's unique. That's what we want. Right guys, we're gonna move on to the next stage. So guys, once you've cut out your door frame, which is like I said, just do a drill hole here, drill hole there. You're probably thinking, oh my God, this guy cannot cut out the shit. But don't worry, it doesn't matter. You won't see it because the door frame allows you to mess up a little bit. So don't be too picky with it. So once that's cut out, this door will literally, I say literally a lot, I'm gonna fit in there like that. And then it covers the frame. This back piece here looks like that, even though it's all cut out badly. These little covers will cover up any of the wood effects, so you don't need to worry about it too much, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to apply the paper to the walls, and then we're gonna have to leave it to dry for 24 hours, so we're gonna have to come back to this uh, tomorrow. But that's fine, because tomorrow in this video is like two seconds later. Right, first thing we need to do, we need to cut two of those and then one of those. I usually, when I did the last one, I started with the bigger piece first. So what we need to do is just lay this down and out. Put your piece of wood on top. Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the wall it's kind of wallpaper wall to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you want to use your border and overlap adhesive, and then you just need to just go down here like this. Get your trusty paintbrush and get on all the edges if you can in the gaps. It doesn't matter too much about the bottom because you're not going to see it. But I mean, I like to do things so that like if you don't see it, it doesn't really matter. You can just make it look good anyway. So once that's applied to the wood and it's all soaked, then just move out of the way. And then you need to get over your piece that you've cut out already. Remember to make sure there's a bit of an overlap. You are gonna be cutting it off anyway, so you're not gonna see it, but you wanna have an overlap because you, you always have too much than too little. Then you just need to do a nice little squiggly line, like you were free. And as you start to taste it down, it will start to get wet and it will start to stay down. Go right to the edges. If you do get um, a paintbrush hair come off or anything, then just, just get it out because you will see it through. You will see it through once it's on. So just get it out, like at this stage if you can. It doesn't matter if you get this glue on the other side because it will dry clear and you won't see it, so it doesn't really matter. You want to make sure you get right to the edges because you need to make sure it's all over. And then I'll show you how to apply it and then we'll crack on and get the other lot done. So, the most important thing is to make sure that the, the bricks line up at the bottom. So once the paper is down you want to get your sponge and you want to work in circular motions from the middle out so that basically it gets rid of all the excess glue that you've got in there and then i'll show you what to do be careful not to push or get your nails on there or wear jewelry or anything because what will happen is you'll just rip the paper and then it'll be ruined and down here there's a line where the flooring goes into you just need to literally score literally again you just need to score with your fingers down until that gap is shown and then you need to get a Stanley blade and cut this because if you I found with the other one if you don't cut it now it will be very difficult for you to push the board in afterwards that gap that makes up the flooring what I tend to do is just make a few little cut incisions and then get the floor itself and then push the floor into it, just so that you know it fits. And then take it out, and then it will leave an indent, which is perfect. So push down the excess on the ends, 
you're not going to see this bottom bit too much, so I wouldn't worry. Score the end so that there's a line. Score the top. Score all the way down. And if you didn't get any glue in some of the gaps, it doesn't matter because you can go back and do it again at another stage. So once you've done that, you want to lift this up like so. It's already sticking. And put it down onto this piece of cardboard. This is how I found was the best way to get it to stay. And then tape up the edges so that it holds it flat as it dries. And then when it comes to when it comes to finishing, what you do is you just score it around with the standing knife and cut it away. And it tends to work. I mean it's worked on this one, this one looks great, so it'll work on the second one that I've made. Then I'm going to go grab some lunch or dinner. Right, guys, see you tomorrow. When the walls are dry, what you need to do is just rip off this tape and then you can just cut out this section. So you can just cut it anyhow, just get it off the board. So it's like that. Do the same with the other one. Cut it away. Like so. And now we can get rid of this massive box. This should save us some room. Now what we want to do with these give it too much. Is if you can see that side is like that. All we need to do now is cut away any excess tape. So just score along the line. Just get it as neat as you can. There we go. So then you'll have something that looks like that or will be that way around. And then that's the real live looking brickwork. So once we've done that, what we need to do is glue in the door. And I've already done this one to show you. So the door is put into the frame. I've already put that bit in as well. That just pushes in. We're just literally going to make up the crate again, but we're not going to have the front on it. So we're going to be doing that. So this has all been put in and glued into place. When you do this side, you want to make sure the door is flush. So you want it out a little bit more this side, but make sure it's flush that side because when it's all dry, you want it to be flush enough so that you can stick these covers on to cover up any of the mistakes that you've got there or just the rough cutting that I did. You might want to cut it out nice and neatly so you don't have to do that. But with me, I like to just do things as I go. Right, so we've got to this stage. I'm going to show you how to glue one of these doors in. Gonna get some of that glue off there. Let's clear up this, which won't take long. Let's push that to the side, out the way. I'm gonna lay this down. What you need to do is you need to grab your door. I've got my black door here that we painted, and then you just need to set it in, see how it fits. Remembering that that flush piece there, it, this flush piece goes at the bottom because you don't want it covering up that because you need the base to slot into place there. And then you just need to push it in and make sure it fits nice and snug. And as you see it will it won't sit level. It'll it'll be right it'll be raised in some bits and that's when we're starting to dry with the glue we want to be pushing it into place. So the next thing we need to do is lift it up. And then we've got the impact glue. So this is just like instant contact adhesive which is absolutely fine for what we want. And don't put it on here, put it on the door, because that it's just easier to know where the door is going to go. So just glue all the way around the door, as much as you possibly physically can. There we go. If you have more time to do it, it's fine. I mean, you can take your time, don't rush it. There's no point of rushing it. 
and then just slot it into place. Once it's in place, the glue will start to stick to the surround. So push it right in to start with, and then once it's all stuck in there, just then you can start to level out where you want it. So I'm going to show you behind here, just need to push it back there so it's level, push it at the top a little bit there, just so it's nice and level there. Once you've got it in place, get your contact glue again, mine's like spilling out everywhere, it's lovely. And just go around the edges and fill in all the gaps so that when it dries, it will dry in those gaps. If it moves, it's fine. You can just put it back into place once you're done. There we go. We'll let that dry out. While this door is drying, guys, we're going to move on to doing the curtains, okay? Right, so the next thing we need to do is we'll get the curtains ready while a few things are drying up. So I just took an A4 piece of paper, I kind of folded it over just so that it would fit on here and then drape at the bottom a bit. So if it's, as you can see there, it's a little bit over flap. Because what you want to do, I've done it a bit longer on this as well. If as you can see, the curtains are there and it's got that much of an over flap. Because I want them to drape. So... It doesn't matter if they're peeling and the edges are rough because it just kind of adds to the effect. The next thing we need to do is just push that out the way over there. And I'll show you on these curtains. They don't have to be straight or anything because it doesn't, really doesn't matter. So this is the curtain pole that I've made. I don't know if you can see. It's just like a long rod. Uh, we just cut it off the, the long extension. You just have it as long as you want it so, you know, so that it fits in. And you want to make sure that the when the curtains are on, that when they're a bit scrunched up, they'll fit perfectly. So as you can see there, there's a little bit extra, but once they're all scrunched up, they'll look like real curtains, and then they'll go to the ends. You don't need to paint in here, you just need to paint the middle and the ends, because the curtains will cover the majority of that, and they'll never slide back enough for you to expose that. You can paint the whole rod if you want to, I just didn't see the need to, because you don't see it. Right, so the next thing we need to do is make the curtains so that they work. So we just get this rod and we, we lay it on here flat and then we just need to fold over the fabric. Just a nice, an in, maybe about an inch or something like that, a nice inch or so. And then once that's into place and it looks level enough, we need to take some tape. So we'll fold that over again and then make sure that's in there nice and level. Once that looks level to you, then you just need to lay the tape down evenly with the rod. I'll show you in a moment what it looks like. You make sure you get it right, okay, guys? There we go. That's so. So then once you've folded this over, this tape will hold the fabric in place because 3M tape or any sort of masking tape will just hold, hold fabric well. And then you want to make sure the rod slides in and out with ease. What you need to do now is because you have got this line here, you can sew across this line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and sew that up. Just a nice easy stitch. You can take this out now. You don't need that in there. We're going to sew that up and then we'll have a working curtain. So you should have a curtain that looks like this. It's nice and, you know, it's it's not level at the bottom. It's rough and tumbled. There's a bit of stuff fraying. The back doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't matter. As long as it slides into your rod, that's all you really care about for now. So you just need to put that in there and just test it out. When the, when the rod's painted, it does tend to be a bit difficult to get it in, but this is just an example. So there you go. So you've got it like that. And you can imagine when it's all scrunched up, Let's just scrunch it all up a bit. So you've got some to the edge there. You want to scrunch it a little bit and then you'll have the middle and then it'll look a bit more like a more like a stage curtain. 
Okay, and then you can always just fold it to the side. You need, if you need to tuck it up, you can always just bring it all the way. You can just it, the, the material is quite strong, so you can always just scrunch it right up and have it right at the side. And you can always get some tie backs and tie the curtain out of the way if you want to. But I like them closed with the people peeking behind because I think it's quite cool. And then we just need to now go and sew up the next one, which I'm not going to show you doing because it's the same as this. And then we'll move on to the next stage, guys. Okay, see you in a minute. So guys, once you've done the second curtain, which only, these, these curtains didn't really take long to do, to be fair. I'm saying probably say about five minutes each curtain, so that, that, that part of the process doesn't actually take that long at all. You just need to take the tape off, and then we'll just test and see what they look like on together. So we'll shove that down there. It's better if you twist it, really. There you go. So. It's hard to imagine it on, but those are the stage curtains. Hello. <laughs> right, so we're going to move on to putting the frame together, and then we'll get on to mounting this to the backstage, and then we'll work on the stage itself. Just need to stick a blob of glue in each of the six corners. We'll, we'll just do it in six places. So each corner and then in the middles. You can put one right in the centre if you want to, just for luck. We'll lift this up and then we'll just put it in place and stick it down and then wait for it to dry. Oh, the tweezers are trying to stick to my arm. So you just got to hold it in place for a little bit. It doesn't take long to go off at all. Super glue, so there you go. And then once that's done, you have something that looks like that. Because we've got this out already, what I'm going to do is I know it's round the wrong way, but you can get like a little hook like this. And this wood is so thin that it doesn't matter where you put it. I tend to just put it kind of in the middle. Is you just push it and then just start to twist and then make a nice little thing here go all the way through but put your hand behind I know it sounds silly but if you start to feel it coming through then stop because you don't want it to go all the way through I can't feel that coming through yet which is fine okay so about there I'll be fine there and that is going to hold your balloons you see that little balloons so cute what we need to do is they come quite big, so you just need to cut them down. So just cut them right near the tip. Don't cut them so that they're all separate because you want them to stay together. And then you've got like a little bunch of balloons like so. And then you can shove those into the little hook. They do take a little bit of a push. And now you have one completed wall. So that's going to be the left hand side of the of the wall so it doesn't matter building it up now you can you can build it up whenever you want to but that's how I did it so that the wall is complete just make sure you don't take anything too close to the back because remember you're going to have the back plate stuck to that but we'll start assembling it again in a moment so then I think the next thing to really do is just build a stage so we might as well crack on and build the stage now I'll show you how to do that what I've done is I've got some more felt tape and I've put that around the edges here because I wanted to see it with a little bit more felt tape. That's going to be the back piece, and then that's going to be the front of the stage. Just feels nice, not sharp or anything. And we're just going to flip it over. Once it's flipped over, I've already taken these pieces of wood. So I just got some bits of wood here, and I drilled the holes in. You're probably going to see here in the corner, I'm going to put a picture up of me drilling the holes. So just do a pilot hole for the LEDs. So these are like 10 LEDs just from Pound Land. And they're just perfect for making the stage lights. They came with little stars. I took the stars off. And all you need to do is drill the holes. And then you push these little stage lights through. And you want to push them through enough so that they just shine through the little stage. The stage lights up. And then I'll show you what to do next. What I'm going to do, I'll leave the lights on just so you can see it. 
This piece goes at the front, so you just need to measure it so that it goes along the front of the stage, like so. And you don't want it to stick out the sides too much. And then how I stuck them on was with double-sided sticky tape. So what you need to do is just take a bit of double-sided sticky tape and put that all the way down right at the front. And then we'll cut it off. We should be able to use a sharp blade to cut that down, like so. Because this double-sided sticky tape is really good for holding number plates on and stuff. You can glue it if you want to, but I just thought it would just be easier to stick it. Because if I ever need to peel it up and work on the lights and stuff, I can. You could use Velcro again, but I just thought using that would be good. Right, what you need to do now is stick this down into place. So make sure it lines up with the front well enough. So, right. Okay, just made a fatal error. Let's just spin it around. That is the back, but it doesn't matter because we need one across the back anyway. Right, so this is the front. So make sure it goes along the front here. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It's even me. It's probably especially me. I do edit a few videos where I'm like, oh my god, what have I done? This stage, I've already pre built some of the stage because we're just trying to save time. We don't want this video to be like years long we want it to be a quick and simple video if you have any questions you can just comment or get hold of me on my social media pages and i will help you build your stage if you're looking to build one for yourself right so we just need to push that into place like so and then you should have it looking like this so with the holes and then it's all stuck nice and neat then we need to go down the sides again with some tape it doesn't matter how thick it is, if you layer it on top, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. And then cut down here. Let's just do both sides so that we're prepared. And then we'll be ahead of ourselves, hopefully. And then we're going to stick some down here. There we go. Oops, I don't want to use that one. Let me use this. There we go. Oops. Very sticky. Sticks to everything. Which is good. Again, I will leave a link to getting this tape where you can get it from, what it's used for. You can use it for anything, really. I've got a nice mess pile building up to the side of me. Right. So once that's stuck on, here's my bits that I prepared earlier. This is almost Blue Peter. And then... We stick this onto the sides down here, like so, and then this way round, stick that down to the sides like that, and taking it right to the edge, nice and neatly, and then we should have something like that. So the stage should be like this. So you've got the sides, and then the front, and then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to quickly put the lights in, so I might lift you up or push you back a tiny a fraction so you can see what's going on. So guys, once you've finished putting the lights all the way around, you just need to just tape it down a little bit. So just get some duct tape, like so, and stick down the bulbs. So they don't go anywhere. It doesn't matter what it looks like again because you won't see it. It will be underneath. And what's underneath doesn't matter. So. so. And then the last bit on that. So when we've got the stage around this side, you'll see it will be like this, all lit up. So we've got two at the side. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six on the front, and then another two at the side. The other one, the stage that I built for my son, has got a few more lights than this. But I think that's nice and nice and subtle. And then you've got a nice switch there to switch them on, switch them off, which will be hidden at the back. You can make a hole through the back here, and then just put the lights through. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little engraving in there, and then just slide the wire underneath, which I'm going to do now.
Okay guys, so now that you can see, I've just put a few screws in here, so we've got one, two, three screws in there. With that bit we cut out, I've just channeled it through, and then I've just stuck it with a double sided sticky tape on the back, so that we can switch it on and off on the bottom, when we need to. We can box that in and put a nice bit of brick work around there if we want to, but for now I'm just going to leave it like that. I've taken the tape off the doors, the doors open absolutely fine, as you can see here. And then the same with the other side. So just have the doors open. We can fill any of the gaps on the top when we want to at a later stage. And then, if, as you can see here, I put a nice piece of wood strengthening the bottom, two screws in the side, and then a bit of tape underneath to support it. I probably will go around all the edges with some felt tape just to make it look smart and finished off. Right, so now we have the stage in place. Let's just quickly show you it lit up. So there you go, it's all lit up now. And we just need to glue it down. So what we need to do is figure out where we're going to have it and then just lean it up like that. We want to get our double sided tape, as you can see here. And then just measure out where it's going to go. So it's going to be that long, it's fine. Put it on here and then we'll find some scissors. We'll just cut down nicely. There we go. And then we'll just put that, that strip on there. This is just because we're going to stick it down now into place. They don't have to be the correct length as long as they cover enough that it will stick it down to the base so that it doesn't move about. We'll take you on a bit of a tour inside in a minute, guys. And like, like I said, you, you probably already know if you're still here with me watching the video that this is a giveaway one so i will be giving this one away i have built one for my son this is the second one to be made i'm not going to be making any more if you want to make one you can go ahead and make one yourself but if you want a flame world before one for my channel then i will be doing a giveaway on it and you just have to watch out for that video because that video will be coming very soon where i do the giveaway i'm not too sure you probably i might be do probably do it in probably say february time something like that it in probably time. Right, so there we go, that's the last of it. You want to make sure all the wire is tucked underneath, and then you just need to line it up in place, push it to the back, and then push down. And then, if you can, get your hand underneath to support it as you're pushing to stick it all in there we go right so that's all in place now so that's where the stage lives it's not going to go anywhere it is fastened to the ground all right guys all right so the next thing we need to do is the curtains for the back this is really simple and really easy to do what you need to do again is just take your curtains off the little curtain pole it's all guesstimate work you can measure it if you're really anal but i like to just when i'm doing projects fun projects like this I like to just guess it. You want two little eyelets. Actually, you want three eyelets, like so, which we had when we held the balloons in place, which like this. These little eyelets here is what you're going to need. You want three of those. Where is the other one? Where is and what I did is I just did two bricks down. So that's what you need to know. And then just follow this line up to the top. Two bricks down. This is where this one goes in the corner. Don't ask me how I know. I just can't, I just kind of guesstimate it, and it just tends to go. I go with it, and then it tends to work. Go in as far that it doesn't stick out, and then you want to figure out this kind of size. So, and then go up, and then remember it's the second brick down where you want to have it. Again, just a bit of guesstimating work. You can, if you're not too sure, put your rod on, make sure that it will go through, as you can see it will. If you're not too sure, and not too keen, you want to just double check. I can, feel, I can feel the final stage is coming, guys. I can feel it all coming together. And then just kind of work out where the middle is. I just put the rod on last time, got it into place, so say about there, and then just figured out the middle just by kind of guessing, I guess.
kind of you can fold them up into whatever position you want so you could have it so that they're just folded here and you can stand cheaper in place you can get these i got these off uh forbidden planet so that's where you can get those and she should stand there there you go so that's that's the stage bit there and then I will, I will be including one of these. I don't have one for you guys as yet. I've got to finish it off with a speaker because there's a little speaker on the stand and I want to make sure that it's done. And then this will just go into that position there. The rest of it really is kind of just tidying it up. So what I tend to, what, I, what I did on the last one is I got some black and I just went around the edges and just painted them all in just so that they were complete. The other thing that I did was the bunting on the back. So I'm just going to show you how I did that because I have got that prepared. And this one. But let's bring it over. So we have the bunting at the top as you can see let's bring you up a tiny bit so the bunting at the top's here which is fine so you can just fold these in and then have it draping down so it's party time at, um, at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and it's all there but if you don't want it to be party time and you're like let's just not have it party time let's just have it night time you can take the balloons out let's not have the balloons in there anymore let's just pop them out and you could just lift the bunting back up and then what you could do is just fold the bunting away so that it's not party time anymore and then it's just night time at freddy fazbear's pizza and it's just standard and you can just not have to have a party so that it doesn't always have to be party time okay guys well i'm just going to go and finish off as you can see with this one i painted around the edges and then that was that was kind of all i did i do have a little speaker like i said to go in there i'm going to get the speaker and then once i've put it into place i'll show you what all finished but that's how you build a, a pizzeria for your for your five nights of freddy's characters so thanks for watching guys Take your one. Sorry. I didn't buy it, I built it for you. With no instructions. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Suspicious. Mm. <laughs> you just look like suspicious. Careful, 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 careful. <laughs> it has checkered balls. <laughs> and it has checked! Careful. <laughs> It's a finesse stage for your characters. Did you want to have a toy? I've done in here so then you can put it up and then when they're having the party, you can have a party. And when they're not... And then if you click this switch here... <laughs> you know that? If you click this switch here, click it there. Oh, that's so cute. Like, oh! And then the stage... <laughs> you love it? Can we cut it? Jake has one each.